Hey y'all, this is part two, and a quick apology again for the scope introduction first video. Uh, eventually I will probably holler at somebody a little bit higher up in the hack director hierarchy to go ahead and remake that video so that it doesn't look like, well, what it currently does, but um, scope is tricky. Scope is one of those where it's very difficult to do small examples because mainly you have to work on examples where people have done things incorrectly, so that's why I put the debugging coding challenges in there. And that hopefully will give us a better concept of, you know, hierarchy involved in functions. But if it doesn't, well, you know, we'll figure it out as we go. Definitely feel free to leave Slack messages saying something like, oh, the scope introduction is terrible, or oh, it's not so bad. That way we can get a good idea of if it's working for y'all or if it's just terrible. So, first thing we always do when we talk about a function, even if we're just debugging it, is read the function out loud. Which is to say the, you know, definition of the problem. We are going to debug a function that takes in an object and a target value. This function will iterate over the object's values and attempt to locate the target value. If the value is found, the function should return the name of the key where the value in question is located, and if not, the function should return negative one. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have debugged the described function key of object value. So, we have our function that's already sort of written here, and we're gonna bring it over the exact same way that we have been. Remove this back because the output will be useful to us going to grab these test cases and so in this case we have cucumbers 14 carrots 20 peas 400 and we're looking for 20 and if should log carrots because that's the key where the value is 20 um, okay and we have one where the key of the object value name Bruce Wayne hero Batman city Gotham and we're looking for Superman Superman will not be found in this object because well just because it's not there and we'll console.log uh, should log negative one so let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So we get negative one for both, which is incorrect because this one is supposed to be carrots. So let's take it to the code. For variable key and object. Now one thing that some people will do is they'll just start trying to debug, and that's okay. That's definitely one way to do it. But what I would say is my favorite way is, especially if things aren't going correctly, write some pseudocode. So the first thing would be iterate over the properties in object. All right. Then we'll say if current value is equal to target, I'm going to say return current key. And that sounds reasonable, right? We're going to iterate over the properties in the object. If we get to the current value, we should return the key, which is exactly the definition of the problem. The problem comes here. We're going to say otherwise return negative one. Now, a lot of people do this, which is why I'm putting this problem in here. A lot of people will do it with an array. Um, you could just use index of with an array, but you might get a situation where they ask you to not use index of. But we're using an object here just because they're really... I'm not immediately familiar with the analog for index of when it comes to objects. Because we can say index of for a string, index of for an array. I feel like there's probably something like that for an object, but I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head. So. This actually feels very, very close to what the problem is asking us to do. Go over the properties, you find the value, return the current key. If not, return negative one. The problem happens here. We are not letting the iteration complete before we return negative one. And this is a situation where we did conditionals earlier and they were pretty much all if else statements or if else, if else, you know, that. The issue that comes up is that sometimes what we're doing in our function defines something that could be considered a condition. So the condition that I'm speaking of right now is that if our for loop is still running, we might still be able to find the target value we're searching for. If the for loop has stopped running, then we know we haven't found it. So what that means is that we need to jump down here to say, if for loop has ended and there is no return, because the return key is gonna stop the function. That's, that's a, like part of something we need to know about how functions work. If we hit a return statement and that return statement executes in the code, then the function's over. Nothing that happens after that is going to happen. So the issue becomes, if the for loop is ended and there is no return, um, we should return negative 1 okay, because we know the target value is not present which means that we should just throw a return negative one down here. But that also means that this else portion, so let's walk through like one example. If we check to see, hey, is cucumbers the correct value? 14 is not equal to 20. 
So what our code is going to do is return negative 1 in that case, which means that we're by definition only ever checking the first value of our object. If the target is equal to that one, we return. If it's not, we're also going to return. So the key is to get rid of this right here. Once we've done that, we have everything going correctly. Otherwise, keep iterating, which it will do automatically because there's nothing else in here. So let's go ahead and run, and we should get the correct answers now. We do. Let's take our newly debugged function back to the input window and see if the tests pass. And they do. So excellent work. Pleasure debugging with you. And thanks for watching. So we'll see you in the next one.